Pro de Bois. I'm gonna do a five minute video and I'm gonna talk about the Federal Trade Commission's recent rule that effectively bans most non-competes. So here's the outline of the rule. So it, it first of all applies to workers in the United States. So it's very broad workers and it applies to both employees and it applies to independent contractors. And so here in Florida, for example, our legislature explicitly wrote in the law that independent contractors could be subject to non-compete. So this applies to everybody, right? Um, there are a couple exceptions. Uh, one exception is company to company, between companies, and also is involving the buying or selling of a business and between business partners in a business. But as far as workers go, employees and contractors, they can no longer be bound by non-competes. The rule is it's everybody below a C-level executive. So if you're a C-level executive and you currently have a non-compete, those are still in effect and those will continue to be in effect. Now, when you change jobs or if you hire a new C-level executives, there will no longer allowed to be any uh, non-competition non or restrictive covenants regarding competition for the C-level executives. So once all the old C-level executives go away, according to the current version of the rules, then there will effectively be no more workers bound by non-competes. So a non-compete traditionally has three limitations, right? And the first is geography. And so we would say within five miles or within this county or within this geographical region or within this state. The second is the time duration. And the traditional rule of thumb is anything five years or less was permissible. And so you couldn't try to get someone to have a 10 year non-compete. And then the third is the actual prohibited activity. Now, a lot of times it'll be broadly defined as any competing business, right? So whatever business we do, anybody who would compete with us. So in my case, um, and by the way, caveat, we've never been able to let lawyers or make lawyers sign non-competes. There's a public policy reason for that. The idea being you don't want one law firm in town hiring every lawyer in town, making them all sign non-competes and then firing them all. And then none of them can work for a living. And it's actually not to protect the lawyers. It's to protect the general public because then the general public would be limited by how many lawyers they could possibly hire. Now, if I scratch my head and I wonder, well, why can they make doctors sign non-competes? Isn't access to healthcare and medicine at least equally as important, or you know, maybe you could argue more important than access to lawyers? You know, I, I, I don't know the, the, the rationale there. And so the public policy, the reason the FTC is doing this is because they really believe that it puts a restraint on the ability of people, first of all, to make a living and then the options available to the general public. And now as a business owner, I can definitely see the reasons why you might want to have a non-compete, right? I hire someone, I train them, I give them access to all my intellectual property, I give them access to my most valuable asset, which is my client list, or maybe my policies and procedures, or maybe the, the special know-how of what we do, and I don't want them to take that and then just go and use it against me, right? This is stuff that I've created. Now, there, there are and there still are other ways that a business can protect itself and other ways that I think are gonna become even more important. And I've actually always thought the non-solicitation, that means don't go out and try, like you can go out and you can compete, but don't steal my clients. Like don't take my client list and start calling them one after the other. And so that's non-solicitation, non-interference. It's, I always think of the scene from Jerry Maguire when he's walking out and he's like, who's coming with me, right? And he's trying to get other people to quit. That's interfering with the business. And if he was subject to a non-interference clause, he could get sued for that. And essentially when he convinces Dorothy Boyd to quit, that is interference. So we don't want someone leaving and then trying to poach other employees. That's interference. Non-disparagement, don't say bad things. Non-disclosure, you gotta keep everything confidential. And um, so there are still gonna be restrictive covenants. There are still gonna be ways for companies to protect themselves. So the new rule was published in the Federal Register on May 7th of 2024, and that means it's going into effect on September 4th, 2024. So employers and people who have contracts with other people that have non-competes in them, as with the exception of the C-level executives, the employers now have to inform their employees that they're no longer bound by their non-competes and we need to notify them between now and September 4th and then um, go and then and so you're no longer if you have a non-compete you're no longer bound by it and so what I'm saying is if you're an employer you probably need some guidance if you're an employee you probably need some guidance so everybody should be dusting off their contracts taking a look at them so if you guys have questions or concerns or uh, you know and by the way this is all subject to litigation who knows if it's going into effect the way it's planned but leave a comment below reach out to me I'm happy to speak with you thanks